Hi, I'm Ben Dickman, Product Development Manager for Chauvet Professional, and you're watching Tech Talk. Today on Tech Talk, we're going to talk about color, and specifically how you make color with LED fixtures. Previous to LED fixtures, when we were dealing with tungsten sources or HMI sources, everything was done subtractively. That means you start with white and you take color away. This was typically done through gels or scrollers or CMY mixing modules. All of these methods took away output from the fixture. With LED, with a few exceptions such as moving heads and some of our warm white and cool white fixtures like this E260 here, everything is additive. That means you're adding output as you add color. This is a good thing in terms of output. This can also be a bad thing in terms of the spectrums that you get, and we'll go over that and how we get around it and which fixture to choose in order to achieve the look that you really want. It's worth noting that when you're talking about subtractive fixtures, the colors you get are only as good as the source you have behind them. That's why subtractive mixing doesn't work for LED, because LED uses discrete colors in order to create the light it's making. That's why when you gel something like a RGB fixture, or even one of our RGBAL fixtures, you don't necessarily get the same color you would get as if you were putting it behind it in front of a tungsten source. This is a very important thing to know, and this is also why a lot of work goes into our CMY modules and our moving heads, because those modules need to be specifically tuned to the LED array that's behind it in order to give you the color you expect to see. When LED came, first came around, and LED color mixing first came around, the method that was used was RGB. This was the easiest at the time given the technology, and at the time was a huge step forward because now at the palm of your, at the, just a flick of a, a flick of a fader or a move of a dial, you had any color pretty much that you wanted in terms of Satra colors. You had beautiful reds, beautiful greens, beautiful blues, even your secondaries, your cyans, magentas, and yellows. Those were all really beautiful colors, colors that were hard to reach with gels, and still you had all this tremendous output. The problem when using a three color system or even a four color system is that when you get to making whites, whites are very difficult to make with an RGB system or even an RGBA or an RGBW system and have good power and good spectrum. This is because of the way the LEDs are produced. Blue LEDs are the most efficient. So even when you're running at the same power with the LEDs, the blues will overpower everything and make it look much, much brighter. You draw back that blue to make a nice white, and now you're limiting your spectrum. It may look nice, but as soon as you put something colored in front of it, or a costume or something like that, it just won't look right because it doesn't have full spectrum. This is kind of where the CRI method came from. CRI was originally developed to measure the color index, color rendering index of fluorescent lights, because fluorescent lights, a lot like LEDs, use very narrow emitters and are missing a lot of spectrum. Same thing goes on when you're using an RGB fixture or an RGBW fixture, you're missing a lot of spectrum. That's why your whites don't look as good on costumes. There's ways around that, and we'll get to that next. So the next advancement in color really came when we moved into what we call our full color system. This is our RGBAL system. We've spent a lot of time educating people on how that works and why that works better. But the short version of that is that these five emitters emit a much fuller spectrum than, say, an RGBW or even an RGBA system would. It allows you to have that much nicer white because now you have that spectrum. The spectrum's been filled out a little bit more. That lime emitter really reads well and helps fill in a big, big gap that was missing from four other four color systems. This is, this is something that can be seen in our Ovation E910s, uh, the FC models, the F915 FC, F415 FC, Anything in Ovation that ends in an FC suffix has this color mixing system in it. So from this system, you can expect beautiful satura colors because all of those nice discrete LEDs are still in there. So you still get your reds, your greens, your blues. And you also get some really nice shades because now we can mix in different colors to give you an even wider palette. Beyond this, we also have a, a virtual color temperature wheel in here. We can still create, even with this, we can create some pretty decent whites. They're not the extremely awesome whites that we can create out of something like an E930 or the near-perfect ones that come out of our E260, but they're very respectable and can still perform very well for you in just about any situation. Since we're talking about whites, 
there's also a couple different ways with LED to make white. The first system that came around was the warm white, cool white system. LED manufacturers were able to make specific diodes that were tuned to warm white and to cool white. When you combine these and use them in different levels of output, you can create pretty much any white on the color spectrum. This is the same color system that is used in our Colorado One Quad Zoom VW, which you see here. This uses a warm white LED and a cool white LED, actually two of each under each lens to mix color temperatures of white, anything from 2800 up to 6500 Kelvin. What this allows you to do is you get that range of whites, anything in between there, uh, but the disadvantage of this is that at the extreme ends of that, your output is a lot less than in the middle. When you're using all the LEDs, obviously, the power goes up in the middle. The other disadvantage is, is that you're stuck to this specific 3200 Kelvin, 4000 Kelvin, whatever it is. You can't tune it via the hue adjustment like you would see in our E930. This allows you to add green or take green away, or add magenta or take magenta away, depending on how you look at it, to help match, color, match colors from other white light sources you're using in your rig, or to help tune to your camera's sensors. It's a disadvantage, but at the same time, it's still here and it still creates great whites for when you need that. Now I talked about our E930 as well. Our E930 is a variable white fixture as well. It's designed to do white light. This system uses a six color system that mimics the spectrum in all three of the primaries, red, green, and blue. And what we did is we took LED, or LED emitters that are on the near end of red and the far end of red, near end of green, far end of green, near end of blue, far end of blue. And what this does is it provides as much of the spectrum in there as we can to create even better whites than we could do with our full color system. So combining these emitters together allows us to give you a pretty full spectrum. We're kind of filling in as much of those gaps as we can in order to give that rounded out spectrum. Because remember, again, colors look closest to what your eye would see when you have a full spectrum. Because sunlight, for example, is a full spectrum source. So what we're able to do is we're still allowed to get that full spectrum from cool to warm here. But because we're using different color emitters in the, in the source, we can also push that black body curve up and down, which as I mentioned before, it's called plus, min plus or minus green or hue adjustment. This will, again, allow you to adjust for your cameras and your situation in your, whatever environment you're in in order to perfectly match that white output. This system is wonderfully efficient and gives you great color rendering and all of the other color metrics that are involved in white light. It's currently the best we have. So I hope this brief overview kind of gave you a better feel for how different LED types work and what they're best suited for. Just to kind of wrap it up and put it in a nice simple form for you, RGB or RGBW, RGBA sources, great for when you're wanting to just get a lot of color on stage. When you, when you want saturated colors, think this system. Bicolor VW systems, great for just that everyday use when you want a lot of power and you don't need a super lot of precision. Perfect, especially in the outdoor applications for this picture, the Colorado One Quad Zoom VW. E260 WW, this is a warm white fixture. This one, remember, you're going back to gels. E910 FC, our FC system is the color mixing system that provides you the widest range of options. It allows you to make the saturate colors, the pastel colors, and some whites. It is the workhorse of the Ovation series, the full color range. Then the VW range, the E930 VW, this is our top end variable white fixture. When you need to have that precision and you need to have that top notch color rendering, this is the fixture to look at. Hope you gathered something useful here and we'll see you on the next episode of Tech Talk. For more information on any of these fixtures or any of the other fixtures that I referenced that I don't have here, please visit www.chauvetprofessional.com.